quick update on my build. I'm going to install some soft mounts under the flight controller. They uh, look like this. It's made of rubber and go under the flight controller. The idea behind this is to dampen the vibrations of the motors so the flight controller isn't picking up any of that noise. And I really think they affect the tune quite a bit so I, I just couldn't fly this capture. I did a quick test without any FPV gear and I just didn't like it without the soft mounts under the FC so I have to go back and change this. I wish they uh, included these with the kit. You can order these from Banggood as well. Or at least pretty similar ones. Yep, there we have the receiver back on. And just mount it again with the small what do you call these nuts? Plastic nuts from made out of nylon. possible to uh, use a notch filter in beta flight if you're not using soft mounts but I didn't need any notch filtering when we uh, measured it the noise from the black box data because I was using the soft mounts so I, uh, I assume this is a better way to get rid of the noise and the vibration from the motors maybe I will try the notch filtering again someday but I haven't been using any and I suppose I don't need it I did mount my LED light like this between the arms with zip ties in the previous videos it's a bang good 5 watt LED and now I'm uh, going to remove it and replace it with a 3D printed part we made in our club yesterday. We, uh, we uh, bought a 3D printer just right now. It's been really great. I uh, really love it for this stuff. You can make your own make your own parts with it and it's quite cheap. Here we have some uh, just want to show you guys some 3D printed motor covers or protectors. I'm, I did or order some red TPU plastic. As you can see it's really I'm just using the yellow one now. Maybe I will replace it later on with red. And I was going to say this is really flexible stuff and really durable. I've been using it. You can do it embed it like this and any way you want. And it's really, really good. Good stuff. Feels really solid and I think it's going to be really nice on the quad capture. So uh, this is my own design, the LED light holder. You can download it from Thingiverse, post a link somewhere, somewhere in the description. I made some ho small holes so I can mount the LED light with zip ties on the uh, tail of the frame. And, um, actually I might do it the other way first and get the... 
Yeah, like that. It's gonna look better. I didn't test fit this part or anything, so just uh, designed it and maybe I'll make it a bit smaller and shorter. The notes are pretty long, but Excess chip ties and sand. As an update, I might have put a free sky receiver under the OSD or the PDP, depends on what you're using and uh, remove the OSD pins from here this one goes to the VTX and it's really taking up space but I think the receiver is fine between the uh, VTX and the PDP but that, that would be uh, something I could change if I was to do this frame a second time, I don't think I'll use any spacers. I'll just put the screws on. I have to have like really long screws for these. So they go in the standoffs properly. Okay. Someone commented on my videos I didn't use any thread lock. That is true should use it. I didn't use it because I, I knew also I was going to uh, take it apart before flying it. But uh, just use a small amount of really soft thread lock on all of these standoffs and motors because they will vibrate off sooner or later. There we go. Now when the quad copper is flying the LED light is pointing a bit a bit downwards. Should be fine. The LED light has been heating up like crazy. It actually burned away some of the electric tape I put on the ESCs. So uh, be really careful with this. With this LED light. I'm not sure if I'm uh, going to uh, use it later on because if it's heating up badly it could be a small problem later on. Then the uh, second part I made for this frame is the uh, VTX holder. I did complain a lot about the uh, VTX antenna mount and how to uh, attach it, attaching it. So uh, I made this using the Foxer 25 milliwatt transmitter it's the only legal one in Finland we can use so uh, we have been using this and it's great for racing with many people at the same time and I'm using these they're called forever tubes you can buy them off some 3d printer stores uh, but I went and copied the design and you can you can just buy this 3mm tube from any like hardware stores or something like that. And uh, mount your VTX, uh, sorry, receiver antennas inside the tubes and slide it on. Then I think the uh, VTX is going to be pretty safe. Pretty safe inside here. I have this self made cable that connects to a 3S battery, like this, and the uh, other end has an RCA cable going to my uh, FPV screen. I have the camera here. So now I will try.
trying to adjust the uh, camera settings before flying with the camera. I'm using the manual exposure. This is an important feature on the uh, camera settings. You can adjust the brightness of the image. And then the uh, gain control. If you're flying at night, set it to high. If you set it to off, you're going to uh, not be able to fly in the night time. And this is the most important feature here. You can adjust the uh, wide dynamic range of the camera. So we, you will be able to see in the black areas, in the shadows of the image. The uh, backlight control, you cannot use it. It's going to uh, be really awful with that one on. The day and night feature, I like to use this with the colors on. going to affect the dead pixels or something like that. I put the lens cap on and now you can see some of the dead pixels on the screen. Not sure if it affects anything but I you can do it. Here you can set your name on the display. That's a great feature when they uh, drop someone's quadcopter from the sky when you power your quad on on the wrong time. They can see your name <laughs> well, like who did it. Motion, lens shade, there's a small correction for the uh, dark edges of the image. Sharpness can be set to full. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll just exit. Okay, and this is the third part I made for this frame. It's an um, Bigger support for the VTX antenna. You can mount it now with three chip ties and it goes between the carbon plates. I didn't test fit any of this and uh, let's hope you can still use it. And this, these parts they will add a small amount of weight to the frame but I don't care about the weight too much. I just want it to uh, work good in the field and I don't want to break any VTXs or uh, VTX antennas anymore. Now you can see the side view. Mm. Side view of the uh, antenna support. I did design this for the Foxer 25 milliwatts VTX but uh, I hope it will fit other frame, uh, VTXs too. As you can see, I added one chip tie to hold the XT60 connector and the power cable down on the tail of the frame, but it doesn't fit very well in the hole where the chip tie is supposed to go. Hopefully, it's good now on the frame. That's it. It's like between the carbon plates. Downside view is here. And the VTX is connected on that orange part there. I did this uh, custom 3D printed GoPro session cover from TPU. You can find it on Thingiverse. It has the club logo printed on the back and the uh, FPV inches text as well. It's going to be really soft and flexible in the back. I hope it's I hope it's you know the GoPro stays inside when I crash but Check the weight. It's 91 grams. 
with the GoPro. The uh, GoPro itself is 72 grams and uh, that's 17 grams if you can trust the scale, I suppose. And this, uh, <coughs> I also made this motor covers, they are like 15 grams. Okay, let's mount the test fit the GoPro onto the frame. It's going to sit like that on top of the frame, like the uh, FPV camera mount. It's going to be covered by the GoPro GoPro mount. That's it. The GoPro looks absolutely huge on this frame. It's like half of the frame. It's like a flying GoPro. It's a GoPro mounted on the copter. Okay, one more thing, let's check the weight with everything on. Four hundred thirty-three grams. <laughs>